Welcome to page 22 of Anatomy Coloring Book. This is Dr. Stephen Harkins. The bones of the skull. There are eight cranial bones, cranium meaning the head, starting with the occipital bone. That's this bone back here. This is known as the occipital bone or the occiput. And right here, this is the lambdoidal suture separating the parietal bones on the side from the occipital bone in the back. Again, the lambdoidal suture. And the occiput bone. It's the bone on the back of the head. Now, of course, during formation, when you're body was formed when these bone when the skull was formed these sutures used to be apart these bones used to be separate and if you felt the soft spot on a baby's head top of the baby's head you felt this area right here between the coronal suture and the sagittal suture that was not yet formed so these sutures come together and form the cranium. These these bones are, are start out separate, they fuse together and the at these sutures and they form the cranium. Next is the parietal bone. The parietal bone is separated separated by the sagittal suture right down the midline. Right down the sagittal midline. It's called the sagittal suture because it's in the sagittal plane, in the mid-sagittal plane. There's only one occipital bone, but there are two parietal bones on the side of the head, one on the right, and obviously one on the left. This is called the parietal bone. And this is the coronal suture here. Why? Is it called coronal? Well, it's in the coronal plane. This is the parietal bone. This is the left parietal bone. And again here, the right parietal bone and the left parietal bone. In front of, in the front, of the skull is aptly named the frontal bone, the frontal cranial bone and it is in front of the anterior to the coronal suture here and it includes what you would commonly know as your forehead right at the front of the frontal bone is this sort of notch, not a notch, but a protuberance called the glabella. Glabella. There's your parietal, or excuse me, your frontal bone. And again here, the frontal bone. Glabella. And the top of the frontal bone. And the superior view here, the coronal suture. The frontal bone. The behind the coronal suture, the two parietal bones, the right parietal bone. and left parietal bone. In front of the lambdoidal suture and behind the coronal suture, the two parietal bones. separated by the sagittal suture. 
Next on the side of the head, we have two. We have a temporal bone. See here in green. And this is what's known as the mastoid process of the temporal bone. The mastoid process. Back here, the mastoid process. Big bump behind your ear. You can feel that in between your ear and your neck. Then the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. And then that's the, the jaw there. And then the styloid process of the temporal bone. So um, it, it's the suit, it, it's, it's where the temporomandibular joint sits. This is the jaw bone here, the mandible. And the, it's called the temporomandibular joint because the, the mandible sits in the socket created by the temporal bone, temporomandibular joint. And this is the external auditory mediate, uh, meatus where your ear canal runs. So this is the temporal bone. Here it is on the side from the back. The mastoid process of the temporal bone, you can see, separated by the lambdoidal suture from the parietal bone and from the occipital bone. temporal bone and what other views do we have of it right here the temporal bone there's the left temporal bone excuse me it's not the sphenoid bone and let's color in the occipital bone uh, from the superior view up here behind the two parietal bones and separated from them by the lambdoidal suture. And let's further delineate the frontal bone. And it's the way it runs actually and makes up part of the eye socket here the frontal bone actually makes up the upper portion of the eye socket the upper portion of the nasal of the nose there we go back to the temporal bone from the, from the superior view here you can see the zygomatic process of the temporal bone, your upper cheekbone, ending all the way up here and meeting with the zygomatic process or with the zygomatic bone itself. All right, so that is the temporal bone. Now the ethmoid bone. The ethmoid bone is this tiny little bone in here, making up part of the back of the eye socket here. And in here, and of course, we'll learn about this in the next lesson, but this bone extends from one side of the back of the eye socket to the other. There's only one ethmoid bone, and there's one, just like there's one occipital bone, one frontal bone, there are two parietal bones and two temporal bones, one for each side of the head.
So this is one continuous bone extending from the right side of the eye socket to the left side of his eye socket on the ethmoid bone. Ethmoid. The sphenoid bone is this bone and in a similar way. It extends, there's only one sphenoid bone as well. But watch here, this is the left side of the skull. Um, and it reaches also similar to the ethmoid bone all the way across to the other side of the skull. If you could see, if there was a, a, a right lateral view, you would see this bone on the other side. This is the sphenoid bone. Now here it is right here. And let's see if we can clean up the, this area right here. I made a mess of it. There it is. I accidentally covered it up. And let's make that a little prettier. Here's the temporal bone here. Here's the frontal bone here. And in between, you can see the right side of the sphenoid bone. So the sphenoid extends all the way from the left side to the right side. And it's kind of got a wing shape to it. Um, you can imagine it's a bone that's, you know, shaped, going to be shaped something like this. As it extends from the left side of the head to the right. And vice versa. That is the sphenoid bone. Next the facial bones. So that was the cranial bones. Now the facial bones. And obviously we're going to run out of, I'm going to run out of colors here, but I'll do my best. Uh, the nasal bone. This is what you would commonly, what exactly what you'd expect, the nasal bone. Bone at the bridge of your nose here. And here it is right here. And there are two nasal bones that meet together at a Suture. And from the top, your nasal bones, right and left, connected by a suture. All right, after the nasal bone, we have the vomer. There's only one vomer bone, and it is right here. In just inside, just medial to and anterior to the ethmoid bone, and just posterior to the nasal bone. And here's another look at it in the lateral view. This is the vomer, the vomer bone. Now there's only one vomer bone, similar to the sphenoid and the ethmoid bone. It reaches across from the right side to the left side, as you can see in this diagram right here. Next is the lacrimal bone. You'll have to excuse me. That was not the vomer bone. That was the lacrimal bone. Let's go back and discuss that again. The lacrimal bone is the bone that's just anterior to the ethmoid right here, the lacrimal bone, and posterior to the nasal bone. Lacrimal. And its name is, uh, shares a name with the lacrimal duct, um, one of the ducts and glands that provides tears to your eyes. That's the lacrimal bone. And there are, in fact, two of them, and they are fused um, centrally in the middle. There's a right and a left fused at a suture similar to the nasal bone, but not similar to the ethmoid and sphenoid bones. So the lacrimal bone here does not, in fact, go all the way to the other side as a single bone it's separated into two bones by a suture. The vomer is this tiny little bone here, which we'll learn about in the next lesson. There's only one of them, and it's centrally located 
And as I said, we'll see that in the next lesson. The zygomatic bone, there are two of them, and this name should be familiar to you, Zygoma zygomatic. We'll make it orange. Um, because you, we've talked about the zygomatic process of the temporal bone, which is right here. The zygomatic arch and meeting up with the zygomatic bone, which is your cheekbone, your upper cheekbone. There we go. Oops. I kind of wanted to stay away from the, from the ethmoid bone there. It's, it's orange as well. Okay, and here it is from the anterior view, the zygoma, the zygomatic bone. Here, your upper cheekbone. And they say you have high cheekbones. They're talking about the zygomatic bone. Oops. And it actually uh, comes in here and winds up being part of the eye socket. Let's, let's erase a little bit if we can. There we go. Replace. There we go. The zygomatic arch. Um, the zygoma, the zygomatic bone meeting with the zygomatic arch of the temporal bone. Right back here, why don't we draw that? Why don't we fill that in? The zygomatic arch of the temporal bone here and the rest of the temporal bone as well. There we go. The zygomatic arch. All right, and let's add a little bit of color to the zygomatic bone. Oops, I did it again, didn't I? No. The zygomatic bone. Now, the zygomatic bone, um, let's see, moving on from the zygomatic bone to the palatine. Well, let's color that first of all, the zygomatic in orange here. And let's get some back to green. Moving to the palatine bone, which represents the, look from the posterior view here, the upper back portion of the your palate. If you were to reach inside your mouth, the roof of your mouth, the back of the roof of the mouth there. And again, we'll see a better look at that in the next lesson. Let's fill in the zygomatic bone a little bit here. All right, moving on from the palatine bone, which we had in green, the palatine, to the maxilla, the maxillary bone. Make it in yellow. And the maxillary bone connects here with the suture. There are two of them, a right and a left. And it's sort of your upper jaw bone. There we go. The zygo or the uh, maxillary bone, the maxilla. And give that some color. And the frontal view here of the maxilla. Meeting here with the zygomatic bone, part of the upper cheekbone, and then the upper jaw. And again with the other the left zygomatic and with the nasal bone and the lacrimal bone. So this is the maxilla or maxillary bone. And now back to a bone we've all we know, all know is the mandible bone. This is your jaw bone. 
angle of the mandible, the body of the mandible, this is the angle right here, right here, right here. And the mandible represents the, yes, the lower portion of the jawbone. Of course, it comes all the way up here to the, and meets with the temporal bone to form the temporomandibular joint. There's the angle of the jaw of the mandible again. And these gomphosis joints. And give that a little color. The gomphoses are known also as the teeth. They are actually joints, gomphosis joints. There's your mandible. And from the posterior, the back view, right here, the mandible, the lower jaw. A couple more things to note. Uh, these little protrusions here off of the occiput down here and down here in the back, those are called the occipital condyles. They're the condyles on which the vertebra, the first cervical vertebra, rest. Um, and also these sort of lateral and medial pterygoid plates, they're called, of the sphenoid bone. This bone here, the sphenoid, and you can see these two little plates right here on either side of the palatine bone. And of course, the back of the, where's the maxilla in the yellow, the maxilla bone, the upper jaw bone, here you can see, and the roof of the mouth, the front of the roof of the mouth. And that represents a brief description of the bones of the cranium and the face, the facial bones and the, oh, actually we have one more, hold on. This is the concha or the concha, the inferior nasal concha. These are um, inside the nose, the nasal bone, and and or inside inside the the nasal cavity. And they form structures called terminates, which help circulate air create turbulence in the air as it passes through your nose. And one more last thing. So that's the inferior nasal concha or concha. Uh, the ethmoid, there were two little processes coming off of the ethmoid bone here. Right here that we left out. The part of this bone here, the ethmoid extends down into the nasal cavity um, and which we'll see more detail on the next lesson. And this is Dr. Stephen Harkins. This is page 22 of Anatomy Coloring Book. Until next time.